Good evening, everybody. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Good, good. Thanks, thanks. So I might do some head turning, uh, but that's for my check. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. I'll start with this. Arulillarke avulagamillai, porulillarke evulagamillai. Roughly translates to if you don't have blessings and kindness, you don't find a place there. And if you don't have things, you can't lead a happy life here. It's a very famous poet who said this. So then, I'm very curious, what are those things that are very important to us? Then we come to the things. So let's go on to the things. What are the two things that you would pick up when there is a fire in the house? Something like this. So this is a question that I ask very many times to myself. And every time, since I'm not an outlier, I'm a common middle class person. I say, like, we'll cross the bridge when we get there. But very selfish guy me, I ask my daughters this question every time that I think. And I ask my first daughter, what are those two or one thing that you would pick away from your home from the house when the house is on fire. Immediately, she was smart. She says, Papa, I take Aadhaar card. <laughs> I take hall tickets. And I take the mark sheets. Very smart girl who lives in the present that can make a difference to her in the future. Very rational. No doubts about it. And then I turn to my second kid who is much younger, she's not going through her board exams, so I ask the same question to her again. What would you do when the house is on fire? And the second kid tells me, Papa, I will go and rescue my elder sister out from the fire. According to a statistician, uh, I mean, uh, a former director, he says, like, the first generation of atomic bomb like, I don't know how to read it, 500,000. So much of heat or the burning is happening as of now, every day. Now, how soon this fire could get out of control, right? You have only 12 years to fight this as what the scientists call as a point of no return which means it's going to get catastrophic. And this was told in 2018, not just today. Right? So you have already lost time with it. Now, this gives you what will happen if one person increase, or say one degree increase, and uh, what will happen if two degree increases, and so on. We have the heat waves, we have you know, um, right? The same people who used to cut trees called me, okay? That was not a deja vu moment, but how people are suffering, right? Now, now what we do is, even in a one person increase in the weather or the temperature that we have, what kind of thing that it would pinch us, right? Global warming, greenhouse gases, Blah, blah, blah. What does it affect me? Right? Does the risk affect me? Yes, it affects. One degree increase will make sure that by 2030, you have 9% production less of rice, wheat, maize, soy. And the production will decrease by 23% in 2050. We can see all the negative parts of it and how to declutter physically and mentally, but there is a ray of hope. Why I would say is not again from some numbers published on the website. The right hand side that you see, right, uh, I mean your left hand side, is thousand, more than thousands and thousands of migrant laborers walking during the COVID times back to their hometowns because they don't have a livelihood. They didn't train themselves for a 100 kilometers marathon even. They walked out of desperation. The right hand side is a pilgrimage procession called Pandarpur Wari. It's just eight kilometers from my home. I walk those pilgrims. I have seen it myself. People walk not out of desperation. They walk out of devotion 
to attain something spiritually. And then, uh, if any IPR guys are here, please excuse me because this is from the Finishers magazine. I didn't take permission, but I thought I will put that photo because it's mine. This person walked six times a hundred kilometers walk to raise charity. But he had a constraint recently with COVID that the 100 kilometers walk is not on the lush green fields of Sahyadri or Western Guards. I had to do it within a 10 by 10 bedroom, 100 kilometers. I'm saying it from my personal view that risks are there and humankind is always challenged. Humans are agile, they can adapt, they can be resilient, right? Whether somebody else ran a 100 kilometers walk or not, doesn't matter anymore. We are agile, we are resilient, and we can adapt to things, right? That's the positive hope with that extra mile that we can walk. Now, let's move on to what kind of help can we get it from minimalism. Minimalism, as the term says, it's minimum, which means you do more with minimum things, okay? It's as simple as that. It's not a very, you know, technically like a statistic subject, economics or some kind of a voodoo. It's just with the time that is available, what you can focus, what you cannot focus. It's as simple as that. So time, peace, creativity, contribution, contentment. It eliminates our discontent because we are not dependent on what is thrown at us. It is dependent on what we are going to catch and keep it in our house. What we are going to catch and put it in our brains. We have the control, as they say, the real estate is controlled by me in my home, in my mind space. That's what is minimalism. So the first step is always the difficult step because you explicitly know that you are not going to run long. So there is a deterrent in the mind, but I'm saying you, I didn't follow minimalism until for this presentation because I have been living along that I didn't even need to worry about what is minimalism. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you how. So now I keep selling stuff to you, right? As a product manager or with good intentions, I keep selling it to you. I look at your ability to pay, your problem, how severe is the need and so on. Without even knowing or unknowingly, you think you are getting a product from me but actually you are the product for me. I get to know your taste, when you will be sad, when you will be happy, and when can I sell more stuff, and so on, right? So, whether unknowingly or knowingly, the consumption has become a part of my job now to give you, even if you want or do not want. Think about a guy who stands for environment, he also produces products, and he wants you to consume. See the dichotomy in our everyday lives, we preach something, we want something, we need something, but we do an entirely different stuff. That's the dichotomy in which we are going to live. But what else can we do? We bring in focus, challenge our priorities, dedicate our time to things that matter and things that doesn't matter, effectively controlling our real estates. Right? One, during, uh, this was not now, this was when I started my career, I prepared for a rainy day that things will go wrong, it will be very late to kind of, you know, accumulate wealth, it will be risky to strand your, your, your wife and your, you know, kids. So I prepared my own real estate, which means I got more house. Why? Because my parents stayed in a 300 square feet house all along to bring me up and I saw them suffering. Indeed, at 300 square feet, there were 6.5 people residing in that when I was born. Where is the question of privacy? Space is not even there. You know who is that 0.5? I was a guy in the womb. I got it free without a rent. That's different. So, and I asked people, is this so cruel to you? And one of the uh, uh, students who returned from Los Angeles, they said, Satya, I'm living in a 300 square feet area. This is the maximum paid rent. And I'm okay with that. My father, mother also were kind of struggling through their lives. So is the space important or the address important, all right? So it goes on, right? There are different priorities that we need to juggle. And in my life, if it is not a water leak, I don't fix it immediately. I wait 
I wait for two days, I wait for three days and then if it is a real need, I fix things. Indeed, we, do, we did a stress test on our family with acceptance of the family that out of the three bedroom hall kitchen that we had, three of the bathrooms had geysers. And we said we are going to use only one bathroom for the next two months. And we said we didn't have any difference. Our life still continued. Small, small ex experiments are very, very important in terms of reiteration. So, and then after having got that real estate, what I did in COVID, thinking for a rainy day, nobody came and occupied. I thought that rent will help me. It didn't help me. Then what do you do with whatever you have accumulated? You cannot use it. All right? You cannot use it. An old phone, though working, you cannot use it now because you have a newer iPhone. So I actually rented out my place free of cost to people for free. Is it by design or by choice? No. Once you have that clutter off, that whatever you have accumulated now doesn't serve your purpose on that timeline, you look at a larger purpose why you accumulate. Minimalisms and the thoughts gives you that idea. Right? So, Again, when my wife, I mean, when my uh, mother was uh, having me, my father got a cycle because she can't carry the water pot and me in her womb, right? And that cycle is still with me. My father used it for 20 years. My mom used it for five years and I'm using it for now. But only thing difference is that when I get a new geared bicycle, my child comes and says, Papa, your father got you a cycle. This is my father's cycle, let me use it. So there is still a competition there. Now, and then the value of the car depreciates. That's something might, people might say, okay, this can be done, that can be done. You know, car is essential. One good day, something good happens. One bad day, something happens. Okay, instead of creating logic to buy, create excuse. Today I had a 40 year old bike that I had. I didn't renew my license or my insurance. That's the way I'm not going to touch it. So if logic doesn't work, use excuses to make it work. I'll not go with each and everything. I will go with one uh, which is willing to walk the rule. Un allow nothing in your life that you can't walk away with, okay? I'll take a specific example. You don't need to be thankful to every, I mean, you don't need to be faithful to everybody that you come in your life. You can be thankful for their time, relationship and efforts. But not all the time you can be faithful to everybody, right? Keep that in mind. The same thing happens to physical things and also people and also virtual things. Then the super duper two things. How many people receive gifts and give gifts? Many, right? And you know what sorts of gifts you receive that you want to pass it on to others? or it gets accumulated in your tea trays, right? The best, this best gift that I've given myself is my wife. Why? She doesn't ask for diamond. She doesn't ask for gold. What better gift can you get, it, right? It can be your, your spouse, it can be your girlfriend, or whatever it is. Next, gifting is not the only language of love because we tend to mix that emotion and accumulate more things, right? Finally, we get onto the number of gifts that we receive in terms of possession. Today, there are about, uh, you know, 60 festivals apart from Mother's Day, Father's Day, Sister's Day, Kyle Day, Son's Day, all those things, right? Too much. I leave it with that. It's a plan, customize it, there is a website given there. You can customize it how you do it because I've lived through it. It's very easy for me to interpret. For you, start with it. Next. Finally, you know the earth is burning. Your house will also burn. There are risks. You know what to possess, how minimum to possess. How do you need to take it forward? At the end of the day, life is all also about balancing things. Your personal life, your professional life, and your social life. So I'll take the next two minutes alone to talk about something. When I finished my graduation, I had job offers, and then I grew up to become a, a, a person. The first interesting job that I got was a night shift job, but it gave me enough ammunition to work for big, big companies like Raytheon, Boeing, NASA, Titan, Audi, and so on. So my father asked, can't you get a non-night shift job? 
I said, Papa, I, I'm happy, I'm passionate about this, so let me continue to work. And then, 12 hours in the bed, I couldn't sleep, rolling from one to the other. I went and asked my doctor, what should I do? He says, quit night shift, otherwise your health is going to get spoiled. I said, by how many years? Three years. Okay, then my dependents will get the insurance payout much sooner. Right? But then, that is not the end of it. I sacrificed two hours of reality show every day and two hours in commute because I do night shifts and one extra hour of sleep I sacrificed five hours. I was able to work in the night shift. I was able to keep my family happy. At the same time, I had the opportunity to work with 60 different social groups and NGOs. I took that leap of doing what, not just personal, professional, but also social on a larger purpose. At the end of the day, minimalism is a journey to become of focus, having less with more things to do, uncluttering your physical things and your mental things, and that paves for a good future. I will say, love is infinite, earth is finite, even more scarce is your time. Make the best use of your time. Thank you.